Somewhere in communist Russia, a team of engineers were moving a large object through a desolate countryside, hoping to capture the minds of people everywhere by being the first to conquer outer space. Their rocket was huge. Packed in its nose was a large ball with two radios inside. They had built it in total secrecy. This rocket is ready in the center of the Cosmodrome. The countdown begins. Now only a few moments remain. All eyes fixed on the clock. 30 seconds. 10 seconds. Reaches vertical. A mighty roar. Our rocket vibrates. White hot flame gushes downward. And the great beast lifts slowly from the earth. We are about to create a new planet that we will call Sputnik. It is small, this first satellite, but after it, we will launch others. In the olden days, explorers like Vasco da Gama and Columbus had the good fortune to open up the terrestrial globe. Now we have the good fortune to open up space, and it is for those in the future to envy us our joy. It reached a speed of 18,000 miles an hour. Its flame went out, and in the silence of space, it joined the moon in orbit around the Earth. Then its casing opened, the springs snapped, and the nose cone was pushed out of the way. A ball with four antennae emerged to go it alone in the darkness of space. And a radio began to send a signal back to Earth. Humanity had entered the space age. When Sputnik left its Russian home, it began an incredibly fast journey east, and shortly passed over virtually all of the inhabited Earth, over the wide southern Atlantic Ocean, over the Sahara Desert in North Africa, over Jerusalem, and across vast stretches of the Pacific. It finally entered America, hugging the coast of California, and soon passed directly over Houston. This is Radio Moscow, and here is 
satellite Sputnik lifted at 22 hours 28 minutes Moscow time and entered orbit around the Earth. The first artificial Earth satellite in the world has now been created. This first satellite it emanates radio signals every three tenths of a second, charting its course as it streaks across the sky. Radio signals can be picked up on 20 and 40 megacycles as it circles the Earth once every day. We announce to our audience that anyone with a shortwave radio can listen to Sputnik. This is Terry Sank on our recording. This is the satellite, October 1957. Coming in on uh, 20 megacycles. Ladies and gentlemen, we are bringing to you the most important story of this century. Mankind's breakthrough into space. For the first time, mankind has reached for the stars and found them within his grasp. Right now it's north of Auckland, New Zealand and moving southeast. It will be in 10 minutes about 1,500 miles north of Little America and in about 24 minutes it will be uh, over Santiago, Chile and in about 50 minutes from now it will be over Spain. It was cold and clear. We could see the Milky Way shimmering across the sky. I stood in my front yard, my family with me. The entire neighborhood, the entire city, in fact, the entire nation, it seemed, was standing outside, watching what the Russians had done. Just at the time the Russians had said, a tiny light appeared at the southwestern horizon and glided over our heads. Some of us cried. I stood in awe. Nothing man-made had ever been so global. Everyone knew it was there. Suddenly, space flight and space travel seemed possible. And now back tonight and trying for $20,000 are Eddie Hodges, the 10-year-old schoolboy, and his partner, Major John Glenn, Jr., the Marine Corps jet pilot. Uh, what do you think of the Russian satellite, which is circling the Earth at 18,000 miles <laughs> per hour? Well, to say the least, George, they're out of this world, but... <laughs> uh, this is uh, really quite an advancement for not only the Russians, but for international science. I think we'd all agree on that. It's the first time anybody has ever been able to get anything out that far in space and keep it there for any length of time. And this is probably the first step toward space travel or moon travel, something we'll probably run into maybe in Eddie's lifetime here at least. <laughs> Eddie, would you like to take a trip to the moon? No, sir, I like it fun right here. <laughs> Soviet scientists launched a symbol of man's liberation from the forces which have hitherto bound him to Earth. It's an important day in human history. The launch of Sputnik is like the discovery of America by Christopher Columbus. The launch of Sputnik is one of the greatest scientific moments in world history. 
And in Moscow, the people of a great nation heard the news on their loudspeakers, read the news in their papers. The Russians, who have a constant feeling of inferiority in the modern world, became terrifically elated when their country was able to win the race and getting a satellite up into space. This was one time they had beaten the West and all its propaganda about higher living standards. The Sputnik was something the Russians could now boast about, and they did. We were convinced as Americans, because we had so convincingly won World War II, that we were the dominant power in the world. We had to be. Missiles were being built. We were practicing as if there was going to be a third world war. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here was this first man-made satellite being orbited by our arch enemy. So this was an enormous event. It took you from the realm of theoretical science fiction to reality. It was a reality that human beings could send artificial satellites into space. And that changed everything. It was one of those moments in history where all of a sudden, all of your thought processes changed.